Alright, 1.4 Sketching Graphs of Functions A turning point is a point on a curve where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. For example, in a parabola, the vertex is a turning point. This is an important characteristic of any function. So this turning point is what we're looking for. So is an important part to be able to distinguish the different domains, uh, the increasing and decreasing intervals. All right, now recall from grade 11 that the transformations of a function f at x can be described as y equals a f at, x, f at k at x minus d plus c. What do these letters represent? A, K, D, and C. Well, A and C represent a vertical transformation. K and D represent a horizontal transformation. Let's look at A. A, if A is less than zero, so A is negative, we're looking at a reflection vertically. If the absolute of A, meaning that the number, not the sign, is greater than one, there is a stretch vertically by a factor of absolute a. If the absolute of a is between 0 and 1, so the number, not the sign, is less than 1, we're looking at a compression vertically by a factor of absolute a. Now, let's look at k. Instead of k, because it's a horizontal, we look at 1 over k. 1 over k has special features. For example, if it's negative, we say that the function reflects horizontally. If 1 over k is greater than 1, we say that the function stretches horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. If we say the absolute of 1 over k is between 0 and 1, that's the number not the sign, we can say that the function stretches, compresses horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. Again, when we look at reflection stretches and compresses, a function will can reflect and stretch, or can reflect and compress, but definitely it can't stretch and compress because that, that would make no sense. All right, let's moving on. Moving on to D. Instead of D, we actually look inside the bracket and see x minus D. If we see x minus D, we can say that the function translates a certain way. Then we look at the other type, which could be x plus d. So either we have an inside the brackets, an x minus a number, or x plus a number. What this means is that we are going to look at what they do. Well, the first one translates right d units. So again, it's opposite of what you see. Even though you see a minus, you will imply that it goes to the right positively. If you see x plus d inside brackets, so x plus a number, you will say that the function translates left d units. Last but not least, the c, the last vertical. c is, if you see plus c, means that we translate up c units. If you see minus c, you can say that the function translates down c units. All right, let's move it, moving on to the next part. In order to graph a tra by transformations, the basic points of the common parent functions need to be reviewed. So we're looking at all the basic functions. So basic function has a set of basic coordinates. For example, in the first one, the linear function, the basic coordinates are as follows as you see here. These are your basic linear coordinates. Next one, the quadratic. The basic quadratic coordinates are as follows here. These are basic coordinates that you learned last year. And finally, the last one on this page is the basic cubic function. So we see here that we have the linear, the quadratic, and the cubic function, and their basic coordinates. Take some time now, pause the video, and copy these basic tables. Okay, we're back on to the next one. 
So, next basic is the absolute function. Here are the parent coordinates. And then we have the uh, exponential function. And if you notice the exponential this time, we use a base of a. Something else to remember in the table is the asymptote. It's a good idea that if there's any asymptotes to include those in the table. Because if you include the table, you'll include them in your graphs. So we have the coordinates of the basic exponential with a base of a. And finally, the root function. On this page, you're looking at the root function and the basic coordinates. But what's very important here, folks, is to note something. Note that you have a dot here at the top up here. This dot represents where there's a dot on the, exp on the root function. And the other side will have an arrow. So again, this is the absolute function. So the absolute function, the exponential function with, with a base of a, and finally the root function is over here. So these are the different functions, parent functions that you learned last year that you need to memorize this year. Next ones, we're looking at the reciprocal function. Here are the basic coordinates. Now this one has really strange coordinates and the reason why is it has six points that you must memorize and also the two uh, asymptotes, the vertical and the horizontal asymptote. Then you have your sine function which has values in degrees and you have your cosine function and both of those sine and cosine being your sinusoidal functions. All right, so going through these, this is your reciprocal function. Over here is your reciprocal function. Next one is your sine, sine function. And last one is your cosine function. And both the sine and cosine function are known as sinusoidal periodic functions. And they have this wave pattern. All right, we've looked at these graphs, the sketches, in the previous section. So hopefully you remember them. And these are your basic coordinates. Don't forget, asymptotes should be included in your coordinates so that you include them in your graphs. All right, example number one, you're asked to describe the transformations of the following. Y equals negative one-half of F at negative one-third X minus three plus four. What is this saying? Well, first important thing that you need to do is remember that the coefficient of x must always be 1. First step is to isolate the x so that it is removed with the coefficient. And when you remove that, you must remove it from everything inside there. And we have the following. So if I was to expand this, I would get back to this original function. And when I expand it, I do. All right, so what you're supposed to do is describe each and every single piece. So what does that mean? Well, the negative after the equal sign implies that there is a reflection vertically. The half right next to the negative before the f implies that there is a compression vertically by a factor of a half. Next is the negative on the inside and the negative on the inside means that there is a reflection horizontally. And the one-third that's found in here implies that there is a stretch horizontally by a factor of one, three. Don't forget it's three. It's a stretch because you have to flip this number over to get three. one over three flipped is three. That means it must be a stretch. Stretch horizontally by a factor of three. Then you have the x plus 9. What does that mean? Well, that means you move to the left 9 units. Translates left 9 units. And finally, you need that plus 4 on the outside means you move up 4. So, noticing all the colors represents all the different arrows or parts of the transformed function. What function is it? Well, it's a function f. We have yet to define what this function f is, but that's not what the question is asking. 
is asking us to describe the transformations, and therefore we have by the use of all these colors. All right, we're going to go on to the next video for example number two.